I hope you're ready for all of this. It's an exciting day uh, coming up. Uh, I, uh, I'll do a couple tunes for you. One will be our national anthem, but uh, I just want to say on, uh, on behalf of so many of us, I know we have uh, four World War II veterans today, and uh, I believe 13 from uh, Korean War, and a whole bunch of you cats from Vietnam. And uh, for that, we not only say thank you for your service, but at long last, welcome home. Thank you. You bet. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves.
great country that you have served so well with our national anthem. Enjoy your day. I, you have, I hope you know what's in store for you. But today, enjoy. It's all about you. God bless each and every one of you. Be safe and have a beautiful day.
The United States Marine Corps War Memorial, dedicated on November 10, 1954, honors all Marines who have given their lives in defense of the United States since 1775. This memorial was inspired by the iconic photograph of the second flag raising atop Mount Suribachi on February 23, 1945, during the Battle of Iwo Jima in World War II, taken by Associated Press combat photographer Joe Rosenthal. Although originally thought the six men captured in the photo consisted of five Marines and one Navy corpsman, interviews, research, and analysis of other photographs and video footage taken around the same time of the second flag raising has brought about identification changes for historical accuracy. In conclusion, it was determined the six men captured in Rosenthal's photo were all Marines. As you make your way around the north side of the memorial, it appears as if the flagpole is being raised yet again, as it was on Mount Suribachi. The United States Air Force Memorial, dedicated on October 14, 2006, honors the service and legacy of the men and women of the United States Air Force and its heritage organizations. At the heart of the memorial, one will find a triangular prow bound by three stainless steel spires. The inspiration for the three spires soaring into the sky are fashioned after the contrails of the Air Force Thunderbirds as they peel back in a precision bomb burst maneuver during their flight demonstration. These spires are asymmetrical and dynamic, ranging in height from 230 to 270 feet tall causing the view of the memorial to be different at every angle. The number three is also resonant with significant associations for the Air Force, including their three core values of today, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Granite walls to the north and south contain inscriptions describing the valor and core values of aviation pioneers supporting the Air Force and its ancestor military organizations. Positioned in front of the southern wall stands a bronze honor guard, maintaining a constant salute day and night to all members of the United States Air Force and its predecessor organizations. In front of the northern wall stands a glass contemplation wall, a glazed independent panel portraying the missing man formation, flown in honor of a fallen Air Force member, symbolizing the presence of all those who are gone.
The World War II Memorial, dedicated on May 29, 2004, honors the service of 16 million members of the armed forces of the United States of America, the support of countless millions on the home front, and the ultimate sacrifice of more than 400,000 Americans. Through stone architecture and bronze sculptures, the World War II Memorial recognizes the way America served, honors those who fell, and recognizes the victory they achieved to restore freedom and end tyranny around the globe. Twelve bronze bas reliefs decorate the walls of the memorial on either side as one approaches the ceremonial plaza. These reliefs chronologically highlight the experience of the war on the home front, placed in context with the battles being waged on land, sea, and air. Fifty-six granite columns, representing each U.S. state and territory at the time of World War II, ring an impressive rainbow pool located in the heart of the memorial. Quotes by presidents, authors, and commanding officers, references to theaters, campaigns and battles, and two massive victory pavilions representing the Atlantic and Pacific theaters, chronicle the efforts Americans undertook to win the war. Within the victory pavilions, a large rendering of the World War II Victory Medal is centered upon the memorial floor. Directly above the victory medal, four stately American bald eagles, symbols not only of our nation, but of the armed forces, holds aloft an ancient symbol of victory, a laurel wreath. As one glances over the rainbow pool from the balcony of the victory pavilions, your field of vision is captured by a wall of 4,048 gold stars on the west side of the memorial, reminding all of the supreme sacrifice made by over 400,000 Americans to make that victory possible. This memorial thus stands as a testament and tribute to the legacy of the greatest generation. Still 
the colors. Built in the style of the Parthenon, the Lincoln Memorial, dedicated May 30, 1922, has inspired generations. A 19-foot-tall statue of President Abraham Lincoln gazes out from the solemn chamber of his memorial. Lincoln's imposing temple is surrounded by 36 columns, each representing a state in the Union at the time of his death in 1865. The interior of Lincoln's memorial features inscriptions of this revered president's most important speeches, the Gettysburg Address, and his second inaugural speech. Above these speeches are the murals named Emancipation and Unity. On the wall behind the Lincoln statue is an inscription that reads, In this temple, as in the hearts of the people for whom he saved the Union, the memory of Abraham Lincoln is enshrined forever.
The Korean War Veterans Memorial, dedicated July 27, 1995, commemorates the sacrifices of millions of Americans and Allied partners who fought during the Korean War. The memorial's Wall of Remembrance contains over 2,500 photos, selected from the National Archives, of men and women who served in the Korean War. 19 stainless steel statues, standing in a field of juniper bushes and polished granite strips, represents a platoon on patrol marching through rice paddies and over rough Korean terrain. Each statue stands seven feet tall, weighing nearly 1,000 pounds, representing the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps, and are proportionate to the percentage of participation in the Korean War by each branch. When combined with their reflection in the Wall of Remembrance, there is a total count of 38 figures representing the 38th parallel, forming the border between North and South Korea. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, dedicated on November 11, 1982, honors the men and women who served in the Vietnam War from 1959 until 1975. The Memorial Wall chronologically lists the names of more than 58,300 Americans who gave their lives in service to their country, fighting in Vietnam and Southeast Asia, as well as those who were listed as missing in action during the war. Two arms consisting of 70 panels each form a wide V shape with the eastern wall extending toward the Washington Monument and the western wall directed toward the Lincoln Memorial. Next to the names of those declared fallen, you will find a diamond shape etched in the granite. Next to those considered missing in action, you will find a cross. If a person currently marked as MIA returns alive, a circle would be etched around the cross. If the service member's remains are identified, a diamond would be superimposed over the cross. The In Memory plaque, dedicated on November 10, 2004, honors the men and women who served in Vietnam and later died from causes related to the war. Dedicated in 1993, the Vietnam Women's Memorial, portraying three women caring for a fallen soldier, pays tribute to the more than 265,000 women who served during the Vietnam era and is the first memorial in Washington, D.C., honoring women's military service. Young, armed, and wearing jungle combat gear, the Three Servicemen statue, dedicated on November 11, 1984, stands as a permanent watch over the wall. Veterans have stated, while there are distinguishing characteristics for each man, they still feel like they could be any soldier. It was the first representation of an African American on the National Mall.
got the, the dam. Like right here. Opened in 2003, the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center, located next to Dulles International Airport in Northern Virginia, serves as a partner facility to the National Air and Space Museum, located in Washington, D.C. The two locations together attract more than 8 million visits per year, making the National Air and Space Complex the most popular museum in the United States. This expansive museum consists of three hangars. The Boeing Aviation Hangar houses dozens of historically significant aircraft and artifacts, including the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird and the Concorde. The James S. McDonald Space Hangar houses dozens of spacecraft, including the Space Shuttle Orbiter, Discovery, a more recently added hangar, the Mary Baker Engine Restoration Hangar, is where scientists and engineers work to restore artifacts from the Air and Space Museum's massive collection.
Flight Chicago, flight number 99. My name is John Patak. I'm a member of Sh I'm a member of the leadership team at Honor Flight Chicago, and I want to thank you all for an amazing day. What a fantastic way to finish our 13th season. Today we had 118 senior war heroes, our largest flight ever, on a beautiful day in our nation's capital, touring the memorials that were built in their honor. But just as importantly was the camaraderie I saw of three different generations from three different wars in our nation's capital. The stories being told and the smiles I saw when we were able to lower the masks. I'm routinely asked how we pull this all together. The easy answer is we get up really, really early, but truthfully, we it's because we have the best volunteers in the world. There's so much planning and effort that goes into this day. And so many people I need to thank. Our orange shirts, those are the ambassadors. Those are the, those are the volunteers who are going out finding the veterans, doing the fundraising, getting to the airport to set up. This is a dedicated bunch and they are second to none and we appreciate all of their efforts. Our red shirts, our medical team, they perform beautifully on flight day, but what you don't see is all the preparation that goes in in the months that lead up to today. They painstakingly go through all the applications, all of the medical forms, so that they are as prepared as they can possibly be for today and can take on anything that comes at them. And especially after the last two years, uh, they, our medical professionals deserve our appreciation for helping us navigate this health crisis routinely putting themselves in harm's way to make sure that we could be as safe as possible and get through this all together. Our blue shirts, that's our photo team and our video team. They've documented the entire day and in about two weeks you can go to honorflightchicago.org and see thousands of pictures. Uh, of your day that you can download and share and print. So we, uh, we love uh, our, our blue shirts and the way they help us document this wonderful day. Our green shirts, our guardians, you took time out of your schedules to travel with us today, to travel with your veteran, uh, to make sure that they had such a wonderful day. We st we've talked a lot about teamwork, making sure that we all work together as a team to make sure that they had the safest and most enjoyable day possible. And you guys took it to heart and you executed today. So thank you, thank you so much. Our sponsors and our donors. This trip's made possible from little checks to medium-sized checks to the big ones. We have such a dedicated uh, and generous group of donors that make this these trips possible. So we certainly appreciate their generosity. The other members of our leadership team, this is such a dedicated and thoughtful group and it's a pleasure to serve this mission with them. Thank you so much to the members of my leadership team. And most importantly, to our gray shirts. Our World War II, our Korean War, and our Vietnam War veterans. Thank you so much for your service, your sacrifice, and the courage that you displayed so many decades ago. And the courage you displayed 
when you accepted the invitation to take this wonderful adventure with us here today. So I ask of you, please pay it forward by telling others about what a wonderful time you had and that this is a trip not only that they can do, but they should do. And tell your stories. They deserve to be told. They deserve to be heard. And when you do that, you'll help us get more veterans signed up so they can have their day of honor. You'll help us find more volunteers and you'll help us find more donors to pay for it all. One of the great opportunities that we have to do that is with, a pro, with an extension of our mission, which is called Operation Education. We're bringing our veterans into the classroom, whether it's remotely right now and hopefully physically again soon, to tell their stories and inspire a new generation. And this is a great program. You can go on our website and get more information on it honorflightchicago.org and the program's called Operation Education. So at the end of these days, I always go back to uh, hearing a, veteran a veteran's response when asked at the end of his day, what did you think about the trip? How was your day? And his response was, I didn't realize anyone cared and now I do. And hopefully, you all feel that same way, because we do care. On behalf of Honor Flight Chicago, to our World War II, our Korean War veterans, and our Vietnam veterans, thank you. Thank you for your service, your sacrifice, and especially to our Vietnam War veterans, a very heartfelt welcome home. Welcome home. So when you are stationed in a different zip code, on a boat, across the sea, in a different country, what were, besides warm shower, two of your favorite words to hear? Mail call, yes, mail call. We have mail call for each of our veterans on this trip today. The way this is gonna work is I'm gonna read your name, I'm going to call it out, and just like in the service, I'm probably going to butcher it. But then you're going to raise your hand, and we're going to have our, uh, our red shirts pass those letters down. So we'll start out with Mr. Franco, Mr. Fredericks. Mr. Adidman, Mr. Falkenberg, Mr. Ferret, Mr. Maselrek, Mr. Misishi, Mr. Marat, Mr. Morgan, Mr. Nielsen, Mr. Papalis, Mr. Polly, Mr. Coakley, Mr. Conway, Mr. Sisek, Mr. Quassel, Mr. Shinor. Mr. Sintik, Mr. Surik, Mr. Skidmore. That's all for you all. Thank you so much. Right and left.